Okay, hello, YouTubers, hi, booktubers. I'm smiling because I just, <laughs> this is like my third take, and I, I got a text message from somebody, and have you ever got a stream, not one, not two, not three, not four, but a stream, a flowing stream of irrelevant text messages from one person. If you didn't respond to the fifth one, the sixth one, the seventh one, the eighth one, it does not matter. The person is still texting you irrelevant shit. Have you ever had that happen to you? Oh my Lord Jesus in a can on white bread. That is so annoying. Oh my God. I cannot stand if I'm at, okay, listen, if I'm at work and you text me at 9.55 p.m., there is no reason that I should get three more text messages before 11 o'clock if I'm at work. That means you are sitting here texting me while I am at work expecting me to respond to you. How am I supposed to do that? Like, you want me to just stop what I'm doing to go outside and text you? Like, for real? Oh my God, it's one thing if you are texting about something that's relevant or we can use to do something, but you cannot be texting me about how you're ready to go home when you're at work and I'm at work. I'm not stopping what I'm doing to text you to say, I'm ready to go home. No, I'm trying to work so I can hurry up and get the hell out of here. But you're at work texting me about talking about you're ready to go home. That, that is, oh. If I had a gun, that was the best thing I ever did was not get a fucking fucking gun. Oh. Oh my gosh, dude. Like for real, dude. And uh, to go along that lines, do not, it is not, listen y'all, it is not necessary for someone to text another person to say, I just had a good nap. Dude, seriously, there is no need for you to text me to tell me you woke up from a good nap, especially if I am either at home, at home working, trying to do one of my drawings or make a video or do a blog post, or if I'm at work. It is so senseless. It, it just makes no sense. It's not necessary. It's not, it's not necessary. But I just had to get that off my test, to my test, yeah, like testicles, right? <laughs> my chest, because it was, it's driving me crazy. Ooh. But anyway, I was planning on making a video talking about the books that I've read in the month of September. And now that I'm already three minutes in after my rant, I have to cut my damn list inside, it, in half. I can't even fucking talk. After getting that text messages, you bought some what? Why do I care about that right now? What? What do you, you bought? What? You bought what? Some shirts? Woo! Some shirts. Great. Thank you for texting me that you brought some shirts and interrupting me making these these videos that I like to do. Like, thanks. I have to start over now because I took the time to stop to check that, and I don't know how to fucking edit, so I have to start over. That's right, people. When I don't. If, if, I, if I be in a video and I don't make it, then I just stop the whole damn thing and do it over. But anyway, Zen moment. Hello, everybody. My name is Christina Aguilera. <laughs> anyway, oh gosh, y'all, I, I spent four minutes ranting. Let me get on with this. Okay, so anyway, I figured you guys will enjoy me ranting a little bit, right? Because um, I'm not stopping this time. Here it is. This video is first. I want to say thanks to all the people who have commented on my videos, liked them, all of that stuff. You know, I appreciate it. That, that's great. I thank you. I thanks for the thank you for the messages that I receive. Um, it's all good, dude. Like I love it. I'm not trying to be nothing special or anything like that. I'm just making videos to connect with people who like what I like. That's it. Because as you can see, where I'm at, nobody is really. Uh, on cue with me so so you guys don't think I'm that insane I'm gonna go ahead and get on with the review so the first book that I read in the month of September is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki 
Uh, this book is about a 16-year-old Japanese girl who is contemplating suicide. Uh, before she does that, she wants to document the uh, life of her Buddhist uh, nun great-grandmother. You know, because, you know, and she's, con she's con contemplating suicide for a reason. But, of course, someone like a Buddhist nun would have some answers, relevant answers that she would like to um, figure out within her own life. So, in the course of that, she discovers more and more herself by doing that documentation and getting out her feelings and or whatnot. But this book is split into two narratives. So, while she, Naoko, is her name, the girl's name, is, you know, documenting her life, um, there's another narrative by the character of Ruth, who is reading the journal. How she came about getting the girl's journal was, it pretty much washed up on shore across this the Pacific where Ruth found it so you know Ruth is then takes the the journal entries and she is busy investigating trying to find out if this the girl ever committed suicide or not and what happened with her family this is a good book I didn't so much like Ruth's um, portion of the novel because I don't know she just seemed really rude to me like she had had an attitude problem with her husband too much and I don't have time for that like, stop getting mad at your husband. If you got a good-ass man that's laying up with your ass and giving you macaroni and cheese, stop fighting with him. Like, for real. Stop having an attitude. Anyway, <laughs> I'm so silly. The next book is um, When the Night Whispers by Savannah Wells. Uh, this, if anybody's... Savannah Wells is a pen name for uh, the author... Um, I forgot her name that fast. Valerie Wilson Wesley. Valerie Wilson Wesley writes the Tamara Hell Mysteries, which features a black P.I. So I always say Tamara Hell is sort of the black version of Kenzie Milhone. Milhone. Just a smidget. Not as well written as Kenzie, but just a smidget. And plus, Tamara Hell's last two books were not on par, baby. Like, cut it out. But anyway, this is a paranormal romance I want to say is basically about a woman named Jocelyn who moves into her family's home in the course of that she is um, handling a divorce I guess you could say a divorce and while she's raising her daughter and next door is a man named Asa um, Asa is mm, well it'll give away the story if I tell it but Asa is a, sort of a dark creature who suddenly leads uh, Jocelyn down a road of destruction and the point of this novel is for her to climb out of that darkness so that she can reclaim her life because if she does not she will eventually be sucked away into nothing and what I like about this book is that um, in conjunction to Jocelyn's story she's reading journal pieces from her I believe it was her great grandmother who also dealt with the same force that was Asa. I wrote a review of this on my blog, so please check it out. I hope you guys like it. And um, the next book that I read was Voodoo Season. Oh my God, let me tell you, the ending, you know how you read a book and the ending is not all that great? Well, the ending to this book was very, very exciting. It was, it was really good. I like this book because I, as much as I, I like story, I like stories featuring you know, things about Asian cultures, African American cultures, cultures in general, and mysteries. And then I like stories that features uh, things about mm, voodoo and, you know, ghosts and that sort of thing. This was great because this combined both sort of like the mysteriousness of voodoo along with a mystery, a murder mystery. So, you know, the girl, um, her name is Marie Laveau, if I said it right. She's a... Um, I believe she's a nurse or a doctor and a stream of um, young girls are coming into the hospital who are presumably dead but they're actually not they're under a curse and uh, well not a curse but they're sort of zombified so Marie's job is to team up with a lieutenant or detective and figure out what happened in the course of that I always use the word course in the course of that she is uncovering pieces of her ancestry which is you know steep in voodoo uh, practices and you know that comes along with her powers that she has uh, but anyway the end of this book was off the freaking change I did not like one thing that happened at the end of the book which made me sad but as a three-part series you know I had to order the next one and from that on point I, I can't wait to read the next one which is yellow moon it's on my stack that this camera is on and next is 
Sue Grafton's W is for Wasted. I love Kenzie Milhone. If I could write a mystery series with a black woman, it would be in somewhere sim similar to the voice of Kenzie Milhone. I love Kenzie Milhone. I keep saying her name wrong, I believe. But anyway, I love Sue Grafton. Um, it's undeniable that I love this series. This book was, it had its dry spells where it, you can cut out some stuff. But I'm not the type of person when I read a book, I think, oh, you know, the book could be shorten if you cut out these chapters no i like the whole thing i like all the details that's great but there are moments when you're reading a book and it's kind of just like moving along too slowly you kind of want it to pick up but anyway i think this is a great addition to the series um kenzie did her thing i love her voice that's really what drives me like i said to read those kind of dry passages is her voice is so clear and precise and on point so I love that and then um, uh, everybody knows that Stephen King's Doctor Sleep came out Tuesday Woo I love Stephen King I don't know why I just do hell you don't have to know why but as much as I love Stephen King I never read The Shining so I had to um, oh excuse me I had to backtrack a little bit and um, I saw a copy of The Shining at Walmart it was only like five dollars so i read that so i went ahead and read that and um got that out of the way so that i can read dr sleep you see my bookmark that mm, she's gonna throw her hair back dr sleep by stephen king and red rum yeah anyway but first i should say the shining was off the chain it was so good i was like i started to read it uh maybe about six or seven years ago and I, I never got past the first chapter for some reason I don't know why but anyway every book has its moment and so I finally read that and you know I read that in preparation of Dr. Sleep and here we are and so far I am I am 202 pages in it's a pretty good book I like it I, I think the reason I like Stephen King is I like I don't I like that he's his ordinary characters but he gives them this sense of extraordinary characteristics in a way it's very hard to describe and they're always proud kind of characters like I don't know I can't even describe it they just seem like they're always resourceful and they're always ready to combat the darkness I guess you could say so next um, after I finished reading Dr. Sleep. I plan on reading Sandra Brown's uh, Deadline. This bitch, she is bad, ain't she? Woo! <laughs> I love Sandra Brown. Some of my hit and miss. Actually, the only one I really did not like by her was um, Smash Cut. That book was stupid. Oh my god. Like the ending, nah, I don't think so. But my favorite book by her was Rainwater, which is actually is not one of her uh, mystery thrillers. Anyway, I can't wait to read uh, Deadline. I like the cover; it's really nice. Um, Sandra Brown reads like Lifetime mystery, like like Lifetime movies. You know, they're like there's about a detective who falls for a, a damsel or whatever. She's in distress, and you know they end up falling in love. The only thing I don't like about her movies is the men are always super hungry to have sex with the women it is so annoying it happens in every book they are always so super hungry to have sex with the women it's like stop it's like can't you do your detective work i'm not a prude or anything but it's just like just let it happen don't be like pressuring her to sleep with you just so you can solve the damn case but anyway and then i finally picked up my copy of sailor moon's um short story volume one collection this is a pretty it's real pretty i like this book um but yeah it features the short stories several of the short stories in the sailor moon saga so this movie, this video is 14 minutes long it is way too long um i might have to chop some chop their rant off at the end but anyway i had to get that off my chest anyway thanks for watching i hope you guys go and pick up some of these books if you've read any of them comment below and let's just have another good time <laughs> bye